So I want to introduce all our friends. We have people from Kingston and Mont Tremblant and Oro Medante and Fort Francis and Markham and um, Kingston. We have friends from all over, which is amazing. That we're really, really glad that you're here. Today we're going to be talking to an artist. His name is Joshua Paywis, and he lives in uh, Vancouver. He got to Vancouver really late last night, and I know he's excited to connect to you to talk about his art and to teach us a little bit about how to draw woodland art. So we're, it's this is our very first Connected North at Home art lesson. So I'm going to turn everything over to Josh. If you have a question for Josh, can we hold them um, for just, we're going to have some times about halfway through where we can ask Josh some questions. But if he is going too fast, and Josh, we had a concern that they, um, the students just want to know that they can do this along with you. So if if Josh is going a little bit fast, just let us know that in the chat as well. And we'll um, gauge that, the, he'll gauge his um, lesson to um, what you guys need. So I'm gonna turn it over to Josh and just enjoy the next 40 minutes, everyone. Um, yep, yeah. hello everyone. My name's uh, Joshua Paywis Steckley. Um, I also go by Mangijik. I'm a woodland artist from Wasoxing First Nation in Ontario, and I um, I do woodland art full time. Um, I went to school as a graphic designer, and I do a lot of illustration and design work, and um, just painting as well. Um, I will be today showing you how to draw a an eagle in the woodland style. Um, I will share it with you here, just in case I'm not sure if you have the files or not, but this is the eagle we will be drawing. Um, it's a pretty simple design. Uh, you can see in the woodland art style, um, recognizable qualities of it would be the, the heavy black outlines, um, the uh, bright, um, beautiful colors within those outlines and pattern work. Um, also has like a, usually has natural subject matter um, dealing with uh, plants or animals, um, a lot of spiritual teachings, um, teachings based on our traditional stories. Um, so yeah, basically that's pretty much it. It's usually two-dimensional, um, very flat uh, illustrations. And um, I'll show you a bit more of my work so you can get a better idea um of what sort of um what the woodland art style looks like uh so here's another illustration i did of a turtle um you can see some um, a lot of the same qualities the heavy black outlines with the pattern work and bright colors within it um let's see here okay so here's some more and I've kept these illustrations pretty simple, like two or three colors and um, pretty simple pattern work within it. And you can see um, like within this one, there's also like the white, uh, like detailing and patterns within like the paws and everything. Um, so you can get pretty um, detailed with the illustrations. You can do a lot of different things with it. Um, like I try to, so I add like textures within the colors as well. And yeah, I could see the plants kind of look like a bunch of circles usually. Um, yeah, and I'll just be going through uh, the simple like four step process or five or six step process, how to draw this um, eagle with you guys today. So, all right, we'll get started with that. I'll switch to my Hopefully uh, you guys could hear me. I haven't done this uh, before with so many different people watching, so it's kind of... Hopefully you can see all right on the screen there. Uh, 
Yeah, yeah, we can see we can see well, Josh. Um, maybe move. Yeah, up just a little bit. That's awesome. Yeah, the light seems pretty. Oh, you had it there just a second ago. There you go. Yeah, this the camera's kind of getting in the way of the, uh, the sketchbook here. So you want the students to um, have their pencil and paper now? Uh, yeah, we'll get started. Um, all we'll need right now is a pencil and an eraser and uh, the, yeah, the paper. And then um, I will start with the eagle here. So um, just let me know if you can see it okay or not. Um, with the eagle illustration, I usually start off with a very recognizable shape. Um, since we're not starting a new illustration from scratch, we're copying one um, that's already drawn. Um, yeah, with this illustration, the most recognizable shape for me is the head. So I will basically just start out with the head and we can sort of just break the shape down into um, sort of its basic shapes. It's got a bit of an oval shape here. And then it Josh, can... just so you know, we can I can see, so everybody can see what you're doing. That's perfect. Okay. And then it also has, it comes down like this with a sort of rectangular sort of shape. And yeah, so this is the basic shape of the head. And we can sort of start drawing in the I guess the details or just getting the shape closer to how we want it afterwards. Um, it comes down with a couple spikes down at the bottom here. And we could draw in, so there's three spikes. And we could also just erase this line in here. That's unnecessary um, in the final drawing. So basically, yeah, at this stage of the drawing, um, I try to draw as lightly as possible. I'm drawing a little bit darker so you guys can see on the screen here. Um, but I try to draw as light as possible just because I'll be using my eraser a lot and so I we have um, from Maja, um, she just asked if you could slow down just a little bit. So we'll give people time to catch up. Yep, for sure. Um, yeah, so I want to use my eraser a lot at this stage just so I could get the drawing looking exactly the way I want it. Um, so this part of the drawing, I didn't really like the shape of it. So I just erased it. I'm going to just draw it in a little bit better. Um, so it just comes up a little bit like that. So we got the head here and they'll be attaching a beak to this side of the head. You can see the eyeball will go right around here. And yeah, just I'll just go around and clean up the lines a little bit better. Use my eraser. Just trying to get it looking um, just as, as, as perfectly as I want it. So you see here, like I got some smudge marks. Um, that's just basically because I'm drawing a little bit darker than I usually do. Um, yeah, with if, you, if you're drawing as light as possible, you won't get these smudge marks in the final illustration and, and your illustration will be a lot cleaner. So we can just go and erase these, these lines in here that we don't need as well. And there we basically have uh, the final shape of the head. And it doesn't, I don't know if you guys have the illustration in front of you, um, but it doesn't look perfectly like the one I have, um, but that's, that's completely fine. If you want to trace the illustration as well, just to get a better idea of, of um, the shape, 
um, that's perfectly fine as well. I've done a lot of tracing when I have um, was practicing how to draw. Uh, it's a good uh, learning tool to just sort of understand how artist draws and how to get their technique down if you want to sort of emulate their style. Um, so yeah, uh, there's the basic head of the shape or shape of the head and I'll just be adding in the beak as well. Kind of starts right here and it's a bit of a spike. And it curves at the end and then just goes back to the head there. So there you could sort of see, um, it's got the beak and the head. So this is the head of the eagle with his fur or feathers coming down near the bottom. And then the eyeball will just go right around here. So just sort of draw an outline, one circle. It's kind of like um, a rounded rectangle almost. And then I'll draw another one inside and then fill that with black. Just to let everyone know, the video will also be available on Vimeo. I'll post a link right at the end. So if you need to go back and rewatch and pause, that's fine too. All right. I think this so. might be a time where we can, um, we can just let people catch up. But if you have um, at this stage, if you would like to show Josh what you've done so far, just type um, your name in the chat and Katie will un, she'll activate your video so you can just come up and show it. Okay, Emma. So Emma would like to show hers, Katie, to Josh. So we'll let- Perfect. I think you're still the host, Mally, so you're gonna have to do it. So I'll see if I can activate Emma. We can let her talk, but let me see if we can. I'm going to have to promote you, Emma, to a panelist so that you can activate your own microphone, uh, your own um, camera. Here we go. I gotcha. Let's see if we can see Emma. Emma, can you say something and then that might work. We're just, we are actually just um, experimenting a little bit. So we'll see if that'll work. Maybe that doesn't work. So um, it's probably because Emma hasn't activated her uh, video. So let's try someone else, maybe Mally. Um, does anybody else? Everly, let's try Everly. And thanks guys, because we're all learning this together. So I'll see Everly, I'll see if I can make you is that Ev? Yeah. Promote to panelists. So let's see if Ev can do that. So you'll need to activate your mic and your video camera. You should be able to do it on your end too there, Mally. But I can't. It's giving me more and ask to start video.
So I don't think it's something that we can do with this part of this Zoom. But as we said, we're all learning together. Okay, so I guess we can go on, Josh. Okay. Um, so now that we have our head uh, drawn, we can start using this as a reference for the rest of the body. Um, I usually like to go and start the torso after this. And we'll start with the basic shape. Um, it sort of looks like an oval. It's very egg-shaped. Um, so you can see that the line of the torso starts around uh, his neck here, and then just comes around, just goes down, and then just takes a little swoop around here, and I'll just draw. We'll draw in the full sort of shape. Um, so yeah, in the illustration, you can't really, we'll be erasing this line here. We're just drawing in it completely so we can just get the full shape, the full basic shape of his torso. Um, and then, yeah, we'll be erasing these, some of these lines later once we draw in the rest of the body. Um, so then I'll draw in the leg as well, which is sort of like a longer, uh, thinner oval it starts sort of around by the end of the torso here. And then his other leg comes down just around here. So this leg will be behind or on the other side of his body, so you can't really see uh, the upper half of it. Um, and then this line here, we'll just erase it with our eraser, since we don't need it. So now, yeah, we got the torso, the head, and his two legs. And then we could um, add in the wings as well. Um, the right, or I guess it's, this would be his left wing, um, starts around here. And kind of swoop up and around. They're fairly big. His wings are, they look to be, yeah, about the same size as his torso. So we'll try to make them fairly big. And I'll just try to get the shape of them as close as possible. They kind of widen up a bit. And then just circles around here. Okay, Josh, yeah, so uh, Amanda and Jose just would like you to slow down just a bit, please, so that they can get caught up. Okay. Thanks. Yep. We've got lots of time. Sure. Okay. Um, I'll just zoom in here. Uh, you can see my line work isn't the cleanest and that's completely fine. Um, yeah, at this stage of the drawing, we're just trying to get it looking as close as possible to the illustration that I've, I've given you. Um, so you can just, yeah, go in and rework them, try to get it as, as close as possible to how you want it to look. Um, and then just go and erase those other lines that you don't need. So at this stage of the drawing, um, yeah, I'm usually using my eraser just as much as my pencil. So really don't be afraid to use your eraser. Uh, it does, it is very useful. And yeah, don't be discouraged if you can't, you know, draw something the way you want it in the first try. Um, it takes a lot of time and a lot of patience um, like usually when I'm drawing, I usually take, um, quite a bit longer, uh, than I am with you now. Uh, it's just, um, yeah, since we have, uh, we're on a bit of a time frame, I am trying to hurry up a little bit, um, but yeah, I can definitely slow down. 
and um, just sort of clean up these lines. And that's basically all it is. Let's just doing the same sort of drawing and cleaning up and just getting the shapes as close as possible to what they are in the illustration. Yeah, my wing it sort of looks like it comes out a little bit longer than the the one I've drawn before. Um, so I guess yeah, I'll go and erase that. Um, in the illustration I have shown you, it sort of curves in a little bit more, sort of more circular, and comes down. If there's anyone that's on a computer that would like to share their work so far. Put your name in the chat and I will make you a panelist and I'll talk you through what to do so you can show your work. And Emma noticed that uh, Joshua, that the wing looks a little bit like a boomerang. So I thought that was a good observation. Yeah. Um, yeah, it does look a little bit like a boomerang. It does curve around and um, has this sort of, yeah, a boomerang shape or banana shape. Um, so yeah, it's always good to sort of use uh, recognizable, I guess, um, shapes or other words to um, sort of describe these shapes because th these are very irregular shapes. Um, so Okay, so we yeah, have Melody really ready to share, to Josh. If you'd um, like to go ahead and share your work so far, Melody, go ahead and hold it up to the screen. Let's see. You gotta hold it nice and close. Oh, that looks wonderful. It's starting to look really like an eagle. Do you see that, Josh? Can you hold it a little closer to the webcam for Josh? Um, I can't see anything on my screen. Nothing's showing up. Oh, is it Candace's? I could. Yeah. Okay. Um, I could see it. it's very. It's in the smaller one at the top. I can't really make it the full one. Yeah. But yeah, it's looking good. Awesome. Great. Okay. I'll I'll go ahead and uh, let me just. When, when your friends are sharing um, students, what you can do is go to the top of your screen and press where it says speaker view, you can press gallery view. So then you'll be able to see um, what your friends are making. It's just a little, um, just one of those little tricks that we're learning. Now Flint and Renata are just gonna show us their drawings now. We'll just get them to enable their video. So I'm just so I'm just trying to <clears throat> I'm just being a bit of a extra perfectionist and that looks <laughs> awesome, Josh. There's something <laughs> shared by Flint and Renata. I don't know if you can see it, if you, if you um, can see it in the little top. If Gallup. Flint and Renata just say good morning, then their screen will pop up. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, right. I see it now. That looks great. Awesome. Thanks for sharing. Um, How do we turn it off, Katie? All right. Um, 
Yeah, so basically, yeah, so we're hopefully on the same page now. We got the torso drawn in and the two legs and the wing. Um, yeah, just to get like sort of proportions right and everything, I always like to use the other body, body parts as reference and sort of look at the negative space in between um, just to, we'll see here it kind of creates some, um, I guess almost a full sort of square or a rectangular shape um, in between the wing and the body. Uh, so I'm always sort of looking for these recognizable shapes within the illustration. Um, just so, uh, yeah, I could get the proportions right and it looking sort of as close as possible to uh, the sample illustration. Um, so yeah, and then, so we got those parts done and I'll move on to the last body part here or the last, the other wing, and then we'll draw in the tail as well, which comes down around here. Um, so you can sort of see he's in, I guess, a heart shape. So this will be, yeah, the right side of the heart, and then the other wing comes up around here, and then his feathers come down into a sort of heart shape at the bottom. Um, and I, I did that because uh, uh, the eagle represents love in the seven. There's uh, some of the Anishinaabe teachings, um, the seven grandfather teachings. Um, there's an animal that represents each one. Um, and these are sort of teachings that help us live a good life or a better life. And if we live within these teachings we will have that better life and a more fulfilling and happier life. Um, so the eagle here represents love. And I tried to show that um, through the illustration. So I made him shaped uh, in the shape of a heart. Sort of just illust help illustrate that. Um, sorry, I'm sort of uh, going off track here. Um, so yeah, his second wing, we'll zoom in a bit here. It sort of starts uh, right on his forehead, right after the, right before the beak starts, and then just sort of curves up and, and then down. And then down a little bit further. And then this side of the wing, um, yeah, starts just around his chest. And then sort of follows the same shape. Um, oops. So that there. Josh, maybe when you're finished that step to let the students catch up, um, would you be able to write the Anishinaabe word for eagle? Yeah, for sure. Um, so the Anishinaabe word for eagle is Megizi. Um, I'll write it up top here. That's M. I. G I Z I So students, when you're done that step, if you want to write write McGizzy as well, then you've written an Anishinaabe word. All right, so yeah, 
right, we got um, the eagle here, his head, his torso, and his two wings. So he has a pretty large wingspan. Um, you see his wings are pretty large in comparison to his body. Um, and then, yeah, we'll start with the tail here. I have it sort of curving around just behind and coming around just behind the second leg here. So it's sort of curves and it's sort of bended uh, rectangle shape. Like that. Um, so yeah. Um, then we could start on his feet. He's got. Four claws. They come down pretty thin and then wide it up. Zoom in there. So he'll have three claws on this side and then one back. All that in. And um, yeah, you'll see in the woodland style, they sort of look like big forks almost. Three claws in the front and one in the back. And I'll do the same with his other foot. There's the basic um, shape of the eagle. We got all the body parts in there. So we just need to add the feathers in. And the feathers are sort of drawn in, in the woodland style, um, sort of as these long, sort of tentacle-like things. Um, and so I'll draw one as an example, and it sort of comes. So for these, I'll just draw basically a, a single line, um, and then we'll just go around it afterwards to fill it out. So he's got five on each wing. So we'll just draw in the lines where they will be going. Sort of come down, down below his feet here. Sort of bend down to create this heart shape. So. And yeah, so the longer one will be this first one here, and they sort of get shorter and shorter as they go in. Something like that. I'll draw the other one, the other side here.
Yeah, there's five on each side, and then he has five on his tail, but a lot shorter. That looks amazing. Josh, do we want to give the kids a couple minutes to um, to catch up there? Oh, look how it's forming that heart. Just while we're giving people a chance to catch up, if there's any other kids or students out there that would like to share, you just need to pop your name in the chat and I'll give you uh, the ability to do it. If you're too shy to share in public too, I just posted a link to Padlet. You can actually take a picture with your device or your, um, and you can post it to the Padlet as well. We can show your drawings that way. Josh, I really like how you started with the rough lines and then you you darken them up as you are more confident with where you want your lines to go. So that's awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, that's pretty important. Um, I'll talk about it a little bit. So yeah, when I'm trying to just sort of get the right shape and everything, I'll, I'll draw as lightly as possible um, just so you won't get these like sort of sponge marks when you do erase it. Um, and yeah, that's important uh, to keep the drawing as clean as possible. And then once yeah, you're more uh, confident with uh, the lines and um, more happy with uh, them, you could go over them a little bit darker. Uh, so you won't, you hopefully won't be erasing or yeah, when you know that you won't be erasing the lines, you can just yeah go in a little bit darker so that um, you have that uh, shape that you want there. And then, yeah, so you can see that we have pretty much the whole eagle drawn. Um, in my illustration, like, uh, or in woodland art style, uh, it's usually broken down into other smaller shapes as well. Um, in this one, there's only a couple break lines that break up his body. So there's one that sort of comes across his chest to his back. Uh, let's see, just sort of a curved line shape here. And then one that just comes down here. There's not too many in this illustration. Usually there's quite a few more. Um, 
Yeah, you know, that, that just breaks down his body into smaller shapes um, for more pattern work. Usually when I draw wings, like I'll have it broken down into three parts. So it's like lines here and here, black lines. This illustration, I didn't do that. Um, and then, yeah, maybe like the tail as well. Um, yeah, if, if you want to like uh, do that, add your own lines and, and try to just like be, just be creative with it and have fun with it, you can go ahead and do that. Um, and sort of make it your own illustration. That's completely uh, fine. But there's lots of yeah different ways you can be creative with woodland art. Lots of different pattern work you can do. Um, so it's it's a really fun style to work with. I find um, even though it does sort of looks very simple, just because of the two D nature, um, you can create a lot of different sort of. Uh, ways yeah ways to illustrate it um just by using so many there's so many different patterns you can use and so many um different lines you can draw and sort of create your own style with it um in that regard so yeah um hopefully everyone's caught up i will this is basically step one, just drawing the basic outline. And then I'll move on to step two, which is adding um, in these emphasis lines uh, within the shape. So I'll sort of go in and, and draw one as an example. Um, so I'll be adding in a second line within the lines that we have drawn. And I call these ones emphasizing lines. So it sort of adds um, some, uh, I guess, weight to the lines that we'll be filling in. Um, so we'll be going in between these two lines with the black marker, and that's what creates the, the heavy black outline uh, that's characteristic of the woodland art style. Um, and I did this way just because it's, um, a lot. I find it's a lot easier. Um, it creates a better illustration in the in the long run. Um, instead of just like drawing over the one line with the black marker, um, it's <clears throat> it's a lot easier to work um, in between two lines. Just because, I guess that that's just how our eyes work and how our hands work. It's it's easier to draw in between two lines. Um, get sort of that clean look. Um, so yeah, I'll just go around every single shape and draw that second line. And it's good to get um, some variance as well. So it doesn't all have to be the same sort of uh, the weight or um, width from one line to the next. You could make some a little bit thicker and some a little bit thinner. And this will add more character to the illustration. So just go in and yeah, do that all the way around. So yeah, there's its sort of upper torso with the double lines. And then um, You'll do that for every shape. Um, so I'll do this side. And if one side of the shape connects with another one and it already has a double line, you just sort of, you won't have to do that double line again. You'll just sort of skip that side of the shape and just fill in the rest. So sort I of like that. Josh, is there a specific size of pencil that you specifically use as an artist? 
Um, I usually use there's there's different like hardnesses to pencils. Um, right now I'm using a three B, which is a little bit darker. Um, usually when I'm drawing. Uh, I'll use like a HB pencil or like a 2H. So those are harder pencils and they'll give you that lighter line. Um, with the 3B, uh, it's a softer lead. So like the lines will come up a lot um, darker. Um, these, these are usually good for like filling in shading and doing a lot of shading and stuff, but I'm using it just because it gives that darker line so you can see on the camera. Um, yeah, and I, I usually try to keep my pencil as, you know, as sharp as possible. Um, what I'm actually usually drawing, I usually use like a mechanical pencil because it's, you know, it's always very thin. You can get the cleaner lines with that and you don't have to sharpen it. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, when I'm doing this stage, I usually use like a like harder pencil, like the either 2B or a um, 2H pencil, um, just because those are easier to, you know, clean up with the eraser and you won't get the smudge marks. They don't leave a smudge at all. Whereas these are, yeah, these are pretty messy ones. But you do get the darker, the darker lines, so that's good. And the eraser that you used, was that a special, I noticed that it was white and it was wrapped in a piece of um, cardboard. Is that a special kind of eraser for artists, Josh? Um, no, it's just, uh, I don't know what you would call uh, this kind of eraser. It's just sort of those, those basic white ones. Um, I'm not sure what the brand is. This is, yeah, this is just the cardboard with the brand around it. Um, nothing special. Yeah, you can find these erasers pretty much everywhere. Um, yeah, these, these ones don't usually use or leave a smudge mark compared to, um, like those pink ones. Like I remember those pink ones a lot growing up in, or in school and those ones usually aren't, um, yeah, as clean, whereas these white ones are, um, yeah, I guess a little bit more professional. And you look at those, you won't get as much smudge marks and they do erase uh, pencil a lot better, I find. Um, yeah, I usually have another one that's a different brand. That's more common brand. I don't have it here with me. Josh, could you just zoom out for us so we can see those double lines a little bit further away? And that way the kids can take a, see how thick they're gonna look when they're actually drawing them. Oh, perfect. Yeah, I'll just go in and just start doing um, every single shape within the body here. And Josh, we have about uh, eight minutes left. So would you be able to um, maybe illustrate what you would do in a bigger space like the wings? And then maybe talk about how you would color them in or choose your color families or what that process would be like. Okay, yeah. Um, so I'll basically, yeah, just do around every single shape. And then for the wings, I will just sort of go around um, every single one and sort of keep that line we have drawn in the middle and then just sort of come around and then just it gets a little wider at the end. It kind of creates this tear dot at the end and then just goes all the way back. And then curves like that and I'll just do that for every single one. Um, so yeah, I have a bit of a tentacle shape there. 
Um, so yeah, once all those are done, I'll go in with a black marker and um, I got a Sharpie here. Uh, or when I'm doing illustration professionally, uh, I usually use a micron. So these pens, they don't leave as much of a bleed mark as Sharpies do. Uh, these are um, India ink. Um, I think, yeah, it's just usually like when you, and this one's like a really fine tip. So you could get in like really, really fine details, like in the smaller um, parts that are harder to draw on. Um, and then this one is a very thick sort of uh, tip on it. So you could get in those, uh, these outside lines pretty easily with one sort of stroke just like that and I'll just be really patient at this step um, because you can't erase the marker and just um, take your time with it and try to get within those two lines as uh, the best you can and Just try to get your line work as clean as possible. So, um, to get a really clean line with the marker, um, I usually just start with, um, I'll pick two points on the illustration. So like I'll start here and then end here. So I'll keep those two points in my head and then I'll start at one end and then just I'll keep my eyes on the second point and then just drag my hand from the first point to the second really slowly and that'll get a really clean sort of line and then you could just do that all the way throughout the illustration just from one point to the next um, yeah, just like that and then Go in and try to get those sort of corners and other parts you missed afterwards. Um, so let's fill in this circle around this one shape here. And then, so we'll do that all the way around the bird. So that'll be step three. And then you'll have um, the whole illustration covered with the uh, Black okay. ink, and that'll be your black outline. Josh, we have a no. question from Aliasek, Aliasek, who, who would like to know what can you use if you don't have a Sharpie marker available? Um, let's see, you can use black pencil crown. Um, I use black marker just because, yeah, you'll get these cleaner uh, edge lines. Uh, with a pencil crayon, uh, it might take a bit more, you know, like coloring in to get that clean line work. Um, what else can you use? Um, you can use your pencil as well, like a darker shade of pencil and just sort of fill it all in the best you can. Um, if you don't have anything else. So, so just sort of, yeah, go in between the two lines and just color it in with the black or with the pencil. Um, the reason I use a marker is because usually I'll scan my illustrations afterwards and then um, do a bit of like editing in Photoshop. And with the black marker and the really clean line work, um, you could really sort of separate uh, the colors a lot easier. And then, um, <clears throat> uh, sorry. Uh, I'm just going to share this eagle illustration again. Um, so you could, can you guys see the eagle there um, on the screen, or is it still showing the document camera? No, I can yep. see the eagle. Okay, yeah. So. This illustration, um, you can see it's like very clean line work. So I started out by drawing this on uh, uh, just a 
like a piece of paper with the marker and then I scanned it into Photoshop and then edited it in Photoshop. So it just had the black outline and then the white paper. And then I added in those colors um, in uh, Adobe Illustrator. So usually like I'll do like a lot of my coloring on, on the computer um, just because it's, it's a lot easier to sort of edit the colors very quickly if you don't like something or just take something out and try to try it again. Um, whereas with um, like pencil and paper, you can't really make those edits as uh, swiftly. Um, you sort of have to know what you want to draw before you sort of fill it in. Uh, whereas, yeah, with uh, like a computer program, it's a lot more versatile. Um, so, yeah, when I'm painting, like I'll usually have like a rough sketch like I'm doing now. And then like I'll go in and sort of work, work out the colors in like Illustrator or Photoshop. And then once I have that complete, I'll start painting. I'll use that as a reference for my painting. Um, all right, so where am I? Uh, so, all right. Uh, so I know you can't yeah. hear comments, Josh, but the students are saying from um, Candace, thank you so much for teaching us how to draw. And the session was great. I thank you very much for teaching us. Um, from Maja, thanks a lot. So the students really appreciated that. Thank you, Josh. Do you have a website that this or an Instagram that the students can go to to see some of your work? Um, yeah, so my website, I'll just draw it, I'll write it out here. Um, Carl says thank you. Oasis says thank you. Amanda says thank you. Jose says thank you. That's awesome. Thank you, guys. I appreciate that. Um, so my website is just my first uh, two names, just Joshua Mangizik.com. Uh, so Mangizik is my uh, native name. Um, and then Joshua is the name that's given at birth, or I was, I was given both these names at birth, but uh, um, they're both my first names. Mangizik, uh, it means beautiful day. So in Anishinaabe Moan, Gizik means sky, and then man is, uh, it's usually Mino, um, so it'd be Mino Gizik, um, so that means nice sky, which um, when they're both together, it'll mean a beautiful day. Um, so yeah, it's just www.joshuamangizik.com. It's a little bit long, but I might just shorten it to Mangizik later on. We'll see. And then my, yeah, I got Instagram and I pretty much just post everything I do to Instagram and it is just my initials, J M P S. And then just I four nines. So yeah, those, those are my initials: Joshua, Mike, Egypt, Paris, Stickley, and then just four nines. Awesome. Um, and maybe Josh, if you could um, go back, uh, bring the document camera back up, because um, Jose would like to see the whole thing. And maybe if parents are there or um, the students have a camera, they could take a picture of this so that they could reference it. But it's the, this recording will also be on the Connected North at Home website. And you can go to Joshua's website as well to see the eagle and other drawings. And Alias Sex says she likes your drawings, by the way. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, would there be a way to uh, just share this like, document I have here of the eagle um, where they could download it and maybe use that. 
we're working on that. Um, but I have, yeah. I have it, Josh, so we can um, see if we can link it to the website somehow. Okay, cool. That, thank you so much for sharing this and how to draw a Magizzi. And um, it was amazing. And just students, so that you know, Josh will be connecting with us um, another day. I'd have to, to look up which day it is to draw a turtle. Um, and we saw sort of a, a preview of that when he showed us some of his, his artwork. And that drawing day is on, let's see, do we remember Josh? Is it April 4th? Could be April 4th. Let me take a look at the schedule. Or April 3rd, I think. And it will be coming up. Um, we'll be adding that to April 3rd at 2 o'clock central, and we'll be adding those dates to the website pretty soon. So I want to thank everyone for joining us. In about 15 minutes, we have dinosaurs. If you can go back to the website, we're going to be visiting the Royal Tyrell Museum. And um, what we do know is that uh, there were birds in dinosaur time. They're the lo longest living, some of the longest living creatures. So thanks, um, Josh, for showing us how to draw this magnificent bird and for sharing your gift with us. We really appreciate it. Yep. Thanks so much. Um, yeah, thanks for having me. Hope you uh, learn something and enjoy your time. And um, yeah, stay healthy, stay safe. Um, yeah. You too, Josh. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Oh, Andrew said me glitch. Me glitch. <laughs> Thank you.